Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Let's have some fun because adventures can be tough, but adventures can be fun too. I know we were riding our motorcycles through freezing rain and Tony Orban and I pull up to a, to a stop sign and he lifts his visor up and he goes, he looks at me and says, and we like this. Why do we like this? And then we went on to continue to ride. Man, if you're facing some adversity, turn it into adventure. I know it's tough, tough going. Uh, and so, like my wife says, we all fall down sometimes. But get up, dust off your uh, your boots, and, and get on that bike and keep on riding. Uh, serving the Lord and seeking out his will. Only way to go. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, uh, my friend Jason Jones and I have this, this term we call Holy Spirit Action Plan. And it's just so cool as you're as you uh, as our creed goes, the the, the most uh, radical pursuit you can have in life is to abandon yourself to God's will, the radical adventure of God's will, the wild adventure of God's will. When you abandon yourself to God's will, you get to see God do stuff because you're right there with Him, watching Him do stuff. This weekend we were out and about uh, doing some. We're trying to bring a radio station here to to Oahu, so we were driving around the 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 island of Oahu to see what, what the best signals would be. And we drove, we drove all the way out to Ko'olina, where I haven't been in several years, towards the west side. And we walked down to, uh, to this little lagoon area, and I hear someone say, Bear Wozniak. And it was my friend Linda Zalezi. She just <laughs> arrived from the mainland, hadn't seen her in a couple of years, and she's got her big old suitcase. And uh, she said, this is amazing. This is a miracle. And we just go, Holy Spirit action plan. Holy Spirit action plan. So we sat down, had a good hour with our friend. And it was just amazing that we would connect right there. And then last night, Cindy and I are down at the Moana. We're listening to a beautiful keyboard player singing Nat King Cole type music. And I just know that the people next to us are special. So at some point when the music got low enough, I just introduced ourselves. And before we knew it, we discovered they were Christians and and very involved in ministry, and we just had the greatest greatest experience. So what I'm trying to say is this. When you feel that little nudge of the Holy Spirit, um, like I know Jeff Cavins, he'll sometimes just say, you know, just want to remind you that God loves you and has a beautiful plan for your life. When you feel that little nudge, it might seem awkward, but as soon as you step out and make connection with someone, you might be surprised what the Lord has in store for you, why they needed a good word from you or what re beautiful relationship can develop. So that little Holy Spirit nudge, uh, say yes to it, and let the Holy Spirit action plan take uh, place in your life. We have as our guest today, Steve Ray, the author of one of the two books that uh, brought me back as a revert to the Catholic Church's book, Crossing the Tiber. I didn't even know how to pronounce Tiber. I didn't even know where the Tiber was. I didn't realize it was the r river going through the Vatican. And so it's my privilege to have him back as a returning guest. I believe this is our third time we've gotten to have uh, Steve on our show. We interviewed him recently. We thought, I'm not going to wait two years to interview him again. Let's get him right back. So aloha, Steve. Where are you right now? I'm in Michigan. Michigan. We are. Yep. But I won't be here for long. I'm leaving tomorrow morning. <laughs> and, um, Starting then, I'm not going to be home much, so it's probably a good thing we're doing this show now together. Because, I know you do a lot of church missions, but you also yeah, do but a lot I'm, of a lot of pilgrimages. We're getting back in the air again. I've been all over the United States giving parish missions and conferences and uh, men's conferences. I've been to Florida twice, Texas three times, Minnesota, Baltimore. Um, I'm, I'm heading to uh, Wisconsin now. Uh, actually, Barry, you know what we did? There's some shrines, Catholic shrines in Wisconsin. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. And I put up on my website that we're going to take a pilgrimage there because I couldn't fly to Israel. Is Europe and Israel were closed. Right. And within two weeks, we had 100 people signed up. So my wife and I are driving up to Wisconsin. We've got 100 people for four days. We're going to go visit all those shrines. Cardinal Burke is going to celebrate Mass wow. for us. 
and have dinner with us and uh, 100 people and it was sold out. We got a whole big waiting list of people trying to get on that trip, but we can't take them. And, and here there, I am. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And, well, from there, we're heading to Lourdes and Fatima in Portugal, Spain and France. And I'm flying straight from there to Israel and pick up a sold out 52 bus group of people who Wait are going to go. Wait a minute, 52 buses? 52 people on a bus. Oh, okay, okay, good. I was thinking that's more like an invasion. <laughs> 52 buses. <laughs> no, hey, you know I, like, I like one bus groups because they're much more intimate and um, I'm on the bus with the people and my guide. Oh, and yeah. But and, we had know, three trips going to the Holy Land this year alone. Oh, we got a talk story about that, you know. And I'm suffering for Jesus here in, in, in Hawaii, you know. It is. It's too hot out there. No, no it's, be it's beautiful. <laughs> no, but uh, but uh, I, the Marion Shrine north of Milwaukee, we we, we filmed there our long yep. ride home. It won't be – it's four years away before that season will even air. But, but yeah, we love those shrines. And uh, in Israel, the one thing you have to – Put in your announcements in 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 your pilgrimages. I know when I when I was on a pilgrimage doing a pilgrimage in uh, uh, Israel, no bathrooms on the bus. It should just be a huge sign. Yeah. <laughs> Don't allow it. It's not allowed. <laughs> it's not allowed because I was, I was, uh, I was, uh, I, you know, I had prostate cancer. I didn't know it at the time, but I, that's all been dealt with now. Radiation treatment and all that, but. But uh, <laughs> I drank a bunch of coffee, and then we headed out to the Dead Sea, which is a long ways from Ooh, Jerusalem. And it was like, I'm going to just say it like it was. Uh, there's a prophecy of rivers flowing in the desert. Uh, I finally told the bus driver, pull over, and I just ran out into the wilderness. <laughs> and there were streams yeah. flowing in the desert. But, yeah, so, so t tell, us, uh, tell us about um, – Here's what I'm wondering about: Are all these, how many pilgrimages do you think you've led over the last uh, over the last uh, few decades? Well, we started in 2005. I've been to the Holy Land over 180 times. Uh, that's not counting Iraq and Egypt and Syria and Jordan and all the other places, but that's just Israel, 180 times. My wife and I. Part of that was making our documentary series, uh, series on the footprints of God. Part of it was just exploring, and we know that we've taken at least 80 groups to Israel, and I always have used the same guide. Him and I uh, and my wife have done 80 trips together through the What's Holy Land. What's his name, by the way? Amr Shahada. Yeah, I know when we were in Israel, our guide was just like a professor, you know, this brilliant. And, and it's all about that. Of course, by the, now, now you probably know as much as he does, you know, because you've been there. And you know, you know, you've heard so much, and you've studied so much, and all of that. But being being with the right person, like Steve Ray, and having a great guide—that's the key to uh, incredible experience. Yep, he's in a land. he's a Roman Catholic from Nazareth, and we're oh. best friends. And good friends. And, uh, yeah, we and we we piggyback off each other. You know, we can kind of read each other's minds, and we work well together. We, there's no like trying to one upmanship or you know give me the microphone that kind of stuff we really work well together we have our plan down he does a lot of the history of the sites and about the land and i do a lot of the biblical aspect why are we right. here what are we what are we looking at here when we're in nazareth and here's i'll tell yes. you what we're looking at. this is the year of saint joseph that's my favorite uh painting of saint joseph right there that's what i think he probably really looked like a rough dark skinned Rough, yeah, uh, rugged guy. Rugged man. I say that Joseph could pick you up and pin you down in two minutes, two yeah. seconds, throw you yeah. over a wall if you wanted to. Yeah. We, we, I do the biblical and the, that, that kind of apologetics. And, insp and because, inspirational. I know you're yeah. always so, well, just being around you get inspired. You can just tell that you're on fire for the Lord, you know. People say, Steve, you're on fire, so we come and watch you burn. <laughs> no, I think of you know I think of uh, Jesus and uh, and Joseph. You know, I guess the Greek word is technon, right? He was a builder, so, and, and if you've been to Israel, you know he probably, if he worked as a carpenter, it was probably a, a small part of his trade. He was a he worked with stone, so yeah. his hands. I I, I, gri I gripped the hands of a man the other day who's a mechanic, and I told him, "Oh, you've got the hands of Saint Joseph." The grip was so strong, and it was it was calloused and cut and yeah. grease, you know. I always I like to say that when I'm uh, in Capernaum and I do my talk on the Eucharist, when Jesus said, "I I am the bread which came down from heaven," I always say the Jewish leader said, "Oh yeah, show us your hands." 
and he showed them their hands and he said, look at all the calluses. That's not a man who just came down from heaven as the bread of life. You're a carpenter. You work with rocks. We know who you are. Don't give us this thing. You're the bread of life that came down from heaven. We know who you are. It, just outside of Nazareth, uh, Bear, and, I, and I've run this more than once. I started in the Holy Family House in Nazareth and I ran over the hill down to Sepphoris. It's a city. It takes me a half an hour to run there and a half an hour back. Did, did you so owe somebody to, money or something or why were you running? No, no. It's a, I, I, I've run everywhere. <laughs> I used to run 1,400 miles a year until my legs gave out on me. But the, Sepphoris is where there was a big construction site going on. The Romans were building a huge uh, capital city there. Well, wait. Sepphoris. Now you let's just let's leave this as a cliffhanger we got to take a break okay Sounds already good. we have to take a break we're talking with steve ray by the author of crossing the tiber and many other many other great outreach with his pilgrimages and his church missions we'll be right back after uh, this message this is dan laboon markham with another episode of country up bootstraps pull yourself up by your own bootstraps kind of an odd scene if you know what i mean how is anyone supposed to pull on their bootstraps to get themselves up off the ground that just don't work of course it's one of them hyperboles that is exaggerating of the truth to make a point it means to get on with fixing your own bad situation by gutting it out and making do on your own well there are plenty of wimps that need to quit whining quit using others and learn to pull harder on their own bootstraps no doubt about that Seems to me more folks today need a stint in the Marine Corps or Peace Corps or a long season of long days on a fish tender. But even a hard-bitten cowboy knows, no matter how resourceful and tough he is, some things just can't be done without getting some help. Got a serious trigger puller army veteran friend who goes by Xavier. Old X's is busted up in more places in his body than ten other wounded warriors combined. X is as tough as they come, yet his pride doesn't get in his way to ask for help when he's needing it. Some things his body will just not let him do no longer. The Apostle Paul was as tough an old codger as they come, went through boo-coo tight spots more than any other man I've read about. Yet, he clearly recognized his need for the Lord's help many a time and asked for the same of others now and then. Suggest we all get toughened up like Paul, but not so much that we are foolish to think we can always get it done on our own. Meanwhile, grab your bootstraps and pull. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. man i don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter you get free video content including the bear wozniak radio show video version on youtube before it even airs on ewtn and you can follow us on all of our social media go to deepadventure.com and subscribe get your free stuff and if you're watching on youtube don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell don't miss out This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you men to join Bear's Man Cave and the School of Manliness. It's When you join the Man Cave, it's a secret Facebook group, and you can't join without going to our website, deepadventure.com, because it costs you 15 bucks a month to join, so you can't just go there on Facebook. And uh, when, you, when you join the Man Cave, you're in the company of, of, of a bunch of knuckle-dragging misfits, like those that uh, join king david in the cave of adullam you know all the misfits kind of showed up and they formed each other and god formed them into the mighty men of valor and that's what's happening in the cave uh, we share posts with each other our challenges uh we uh we inspire one another we iron sharpens iron and then every 
uh, every other week. We get together for a one-hour uh, Zoom video chat. So, men, uh, go to the man cave so that God can help form you and develop your leadership gifts and launch you uh, more fully into your into the ministry God's calling you to. And one of those things is men will say to me, I wish I had a men's group in my in my community, in my church. And I just tell them, hey, it's your fault. If you don't have one, it's your fault. So we'll help you kind of get one started through all the different various programs. Or maybe you just want to do something on the back deck of your porch, you know, having a cigar and reading a scripture together or something. But we help men develop small men's groups, too, as part of the Man Cave. We're talking with, and that's at deepadventure.com. So we're talking with Steve Ray. Steve, where, where can people call, contact you? Catholicconvert.com. I love the name of your of your uh, of your website, CatholicConvert.com. Steve Ray, his book, Crossing the Tiber, was the final linchpin for me returning to the church because of your focus on the early church fathers. But we can't talk about that now because we interrupted Steve commenting about why he was running, who he was running from when he was running from Nazareth. What, what was this you were talking <laughs> What were you telling us about? <laughs> well, I, I love to explore one of the things I, I like to do is even when I take a group over there, my wife and I go days ahead of time and I'll rent a car or we'll go places where, so I can still explore because I am I have an insatiable curiosity. I know you do too. Yes, you, you and do, I are yeah. a lot alike. Yeah. We'd, we'd get along just fine. Um, and so I, I would get, I'd say to my wife, I'll be back in a couple hours and I'd take off from Nazareth and I'd run over the hill down to a ruins. It's an archeological site called Sepphoris. And during the time of Jesus's boyhood and young manhood, it was a big construction site. The Romans were building a big city there, and they were bringing labor from all over the area, skilled and unskilled labor. I'm fully convinced that Jesus and Joseph got up every morning, you walked know what? with the guys, and went there to work. Yeah, and they, and, and quarrying the stone and yes. And, uh, and when we t when I took my group there, the last group we were there was February, March of last year before the country got shut down. And I remember telling people, see those rocks in that wall right there? Any one of those could very easily have been quarried and shaped and put in place by Joseph and Jesus. Those he, They worked here. They spent good time working here in this village because, you know, in their village, they only had 25 caves. Where do you find work? In a, right, in a Nazareth was a small town. Yeah, yeah, you got to go out somewhere to find work, and I think that's where they went. Well, and Nazareth I, was considered a real poor. Like, what yeah. what good ever came out of Nazareth was one of the yeah, problems was of that no, time. Not even a main road going through there. They all lived in caves, kind of like the Flintstones, you know. Right. And they were just uh, it was a rough life. But I like to think when I was running over there, what did Jesus and Joseph talk about when they were? watching their sunrise as they walked that hour to work and uh, did joseph teach jesus or did jesus teach joseph or both that, or both and did they did the other men from nazareth were they all together in a big laughing fun group of guys walking to work and back every i think, well, you joseph, think and jesus, joseph ever hit his hit his thumb and said jesus Christ, you know, people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. no, but, do, but, but do you think that jesus ever um uh stubbed his hand with a chisel or anything like that i mean was he so perfect that he never experienced oh no he you know what bear i brought a big rock back from caesarea philippi one time and i had my sledgehammer in my basement on my workbench and i was going to break it so i could give it to friends you know all of them have a piece of this rock and i went whack and i cracked that rock and it went splatter shattering and i had six places bleeding on my hand by the t you know with that one slam because it pieces right. flew off and and I'm, you know, this is just because Jesus was God, he came down and he lived a life like us. He had to go to the bathroom. I mean, I one of that, the times I was running along yeah. the Sea of Galilee, I forgot to take toilet paper along and, and there was no <laughs> bathrooms anywhere nearby. And I know this is a man show kind of thing. And I stepped into a bush and I had to take care of business. And when I stepped out of that bush, I just, re I just dawned on me, this is what Jesus did every morning. It's, they didn't have toilets. They didn't have hotels. Every morning, those th those 13 guys walking along the shore of Galilee, one by one, they would step aside. And that's the biblical word for going to the bathroom. It's yes. step aside. Yeah. And one yeah. by one, they'd step aside and say, hey, guys, I'll catch up with you in a minute. And they'd go out. And Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, would step into a bush right. every day. 
He right. got hungry. He stubbed his toe. He had calluses all over his hands. He was a manly man. You know, I was thinking that this, the whole the, the step aside thing. I think is kind of funny. I was thinking about this the other day, when when Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal yes. to send yes. fire, and he said, "Well, where is he? Has he stepped aside?" And yeah. people don't realize they mean <laughs> yes, he got into the bathroom. And but, some you know, translations Jesus, yeah. even said he he went to the bathroom. You know, maybe your God's on the toilet. Yeah, right. I mean, that's what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> now, he was on the throne. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, the thing about um, when when you and I were in Israel, we bumped into each other at what's the name of that that the, the hotel up there in Jerusalem where we were Run staying? Beach. Um, no, up up in Jerusalem. Oh, in Jerusalem, Notre Dame. Mar- yes, and and there was that just to the side of that hotel, there is that three dimensional uh, statue of Jesus, uh, the bronze sort of color cop- yeah. copper statue of him. Uh, based on the three-dimensional image of the Shroud of Turin. And when you look at him, you go, man, he was a tough dude. He was manly man, no he doubt was, about it. He was rugged. I do not like pictures of Joseph with his lotion-soft hand <laughs> pulled out. Yeah, this me neither. Joseph of the Bible. Well, God certainly went to chosen a, a, a sort of genderless male to protect his son. No, he, he you know? was a manly man. I think he was probably, a, he wasn't a young kid. He was a manly man, just like most artwork shows him. And I think that he was strong. He was exceptional. He was quiet. He was somebody. Yeah, just think about this, Bear. He, Jesus is God's son. But God relinquished some of his um, his prerogatives and gave them You're to right. Joseph. You're right. What kind of a man would God say, I am Jesus' eternal father, but I'm going to get ask you to be his earthly father and i'm going to relinquish some of my prerogatives yeah. to you he said what take kind of take, take them that? take them to you know and he, jesus was born into a battlefield yeah you know and so when they it wasn't too long after jesus was born when when the angel when he was spoken to in a dream take him to egypt get yep. him out of here you know can and you that's imagine a 250 mile hike from from yeah. first of all from nazareth to bethlehem is a hundred miles. And so walking. he was walking alongside that donkey. He wasn't riding one. Yep. And we don't even know there was a donkey. They may all have been walking. We don't right. know. Riding right. Right. There's just that just image. Is, yeah. It's right. almost worse than walking riding a donkey. I've ridden donkeys over there before. They're evil beasts. But then from <laughs> from Bethlehem to Cairo, where the Jewish community lived, and well, I've been yeah. to the home of the Holy Family in Cairo where they stayed, that's 250 miles one way. Right. And and being on the alert, alert for potential... Well, yep. even if there were, the king hadn't sent out people to, to kill all the f- firstborn men under two years old, there was robbers and all kinds of other things on that road. Sure. So, sure um, yeah, so, so, so he, didn't, he didn't just say, here, Jesus, uh, here's this, this sort of soft, effeminate man that's going to raise you. Uh, but I think it's so interesting what you said. So Jesus probably learned to use a hammer and a chisel, whatever, the tools the same way Joseph did. Sure. And, learned and when he trade says, I'm going him. to... What do you think is in his mind when he says, I will build my church? Exactly. He's, it, he's building a church. And also, when you saw Jesus, my guess is you saw Joseph. Because tell me, Bear, don't you have some of the characteristics of your father? Yeah, even 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 sometimes the way I, well, like you just did with your hand. Those yeah. of you who are not watching on YouTube, there's a certain thing that, that my dad does that I do. There's a certain hand movement that he does that I do. And yeah, and I yeah, and I'm sure that Jesus picked up some of those mannerisms. And I bet you that a lot of the parables Jesus told were stories that Joseph told him when he was a boy. Maybe right. Joseph even taught Jesus the Our Father prayer. So when you saw Jesus, you saw Joseph. Yeah. And jo- so so we're uh, we're talking with uh Steve Ray, one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, it's because of his book, Crossing the Tiber, that one of one of the two main reasons I returned to the Catholic Church was his digging into the early church father. By the way, right, fathers, by the way, right now on my, my prayer chair, which is just on the opposite side of the these monitors, I'm reading uh, the commentaries on the Bible from the early church fathers. It's about a 40-volume set. I'm on Genesis chapter 2. <laughs> So that may that may take me several years. That's what. So I'm looking at your books in the back there. When we get back, we're going to ask you about your library. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha, this is Bear. 
Blair Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach. You know, every day I go out for a surf, and later on at the end of the day, I do a long walk along the sands uh, in Waikiki to the other end, to the place where all the outrigger canoes are, are stored, and a lot of people come down and paddle their canoes. The other day I was out there, and this guy about my age is paddling in on a super light carbon fiber, 22 foot outrigger canoe, comes into the towards the beach, flips the canoe up on his shoulder, walks out of the water, just straight out of the water in an area where I knew there was a lot of sharp coral. And I went, how could he do that? And I gave him the shaka, he walked in, and then I looked where he had walked, and it was super low tide, and I could see that somewhere, probably centuries before, someone had cleared out a path about that wide through that sharp coral. So he knew it, he could get off his canoe and just walk in. This is what lesson I learned from that is that God is, that's an ancient path through the coral that very few people know about. Jesus challenges us to follow the ancient path, to take the narrow way. The Didache said there's two ways in life. There's the, the wide way that leads to destruction and there's that narrow way, the way that leads to life. I want to follow that ancient path, the path that the magisterium of the church teaches us. When we did Long Ride Home, we rode in the Big Bend country of Texas. And the closer we got to the Big Bend, the narrower and narrower the roads got. No one goes to the Big Bend country. No one passes through the Big Bend country of Texas. Uh, they don't pass through it. you got to intend to go there. There are two paths in life, one that's wide and easy and leads to destruction, and the other one that leads to life. Whether you spend eternity in heaven or eternity in hell is 100% under your control. Choose life. Choose to walk the narrow way. Jesus said, few there be that follow it, but when you follow it, it's its own reward. This is Bear Wozniak from DeepAdventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We want to invite all the women out there. We love you. Uh, the mama bears, we call you. Uh, you're so soft and cuddly and weak and meek, but... Au contraire, when I had my cabin in Montana, Glacier Park, my wife and I were just there a few weeks ago, showed her where my cabin used to be. We learned how fierce mama bears are by the grizzly mama bears up there. You don't mess with them when it comes to their, to their ohana. And so we love you and appreciate you. And we have a special outreach to the mama bears now. You can join the mama bears by going to deepadventure.com. And we're also setting up a secret Facebook group for you to be moderated by a woman and for, for the mama bears only. But look at what I have in my hand. This, this is a, a, a teddy bear, a small little teddy bear with a Catholic biker with, a, with the, the cross on its bottom of its foot and the sign of the fish. And it's, he's called the Catholic biker bear, and someone gave us about 40 of those. We still have a few left. So anybody, any women who join the mama bears get their long ride home coffee mug and also um, – the teddy bear, plus, of course, you, you're going to be able to be part of a secret Facebook group, the Mama Bear's secret Facebook group. So uh, we have as our guest today Steve Ray, who, um, I, Steve, you know, so Steve has led 180 pilgrimages in the Holy Lands. And, you know, one of the, one of the th visions I have for a book is called, the man, is called The Man Cave. And just thinking of all the different caves that are mentioned in Scripture, 
And and, and and as we went to the break, you said, I got to show you something. It's from the Cave of Adullam. And, you know, I'm a, that, I think of our man cave as the Cave of Adullam. So so what's up? You're going to send me this, right? You're not going to. You're going to give me this. I can't send it to you because oh. I've only got one of them, and it's a treasure. Just break it in but, half. But, well, it's it kind of is. That's <laughs> I know, why. I'm, mess, I'm messing with you. Tell us about it. Okay. Show, show us. Show us. When. This is it right here. So the people on YouTube can see this. This, this, this. is a sling stone. It, yes. This is a sling. This is this is one that's not broken. And this is what oh. they did. They, they, they would Those are like cannonballs, little miniature night. cannonballs. You, it is. It's the size of a tennis ball. And this is a real sling stone. David picked up a few small ones from the brook. But if you were in the military, in the book of Judges, it says the tribe of Benjamin had 700 left-handed slingers who could sling a stone at a hair and never miss. These are the guy and the guys that followed King David around when he was being chased by Saul. The cave of Adullam, we found it. And it was in my movie, David and Solomon. Yes, I, yes, I, made I remember this. David yeah. and Solomon. And it's off in the wilderness away from Bethlehem, and it would hold 400 men. It's a huge cave, but nobody knows where it is, Bear. It's all covered with trees, and it's out in the wilderness, and we had to find it. Well, that's it. why he had it there. That's why they were there in yes. the first place, right? It was a exactly. hideout. And I found this sling stone in that cave. Oh, my. And I think the reason it's still there, see, is it broke. When See, what they would uh, do is take a stone and they would chip it at night around the fire, and they would chip it so it was perfectly round, so when they slung it, it would fly straight. I mean, that's like, a, that's like a musk. That's a that's a, like a small cannonball. I mean, it's, oh, it is. This, uh, if you got it's hit a baseball, with something like baseball this. baseball size. Or, man, if you got hit with something like that, it, you, it would lay you out quick. Now, this is, I, got, I convinced Bear that this is 3,000 years old from one of David's men, in the back of the cave of Adullam, I found this, and they probably left it because it cracked when they were shaping oh, it. Oh, yeah, it cracked in half, yeah. But, but now I've got this perfectly shaped half wow. of a sling stone. Right That's so nice of cave. you to send it to me. Thank you. I'll try to get you one next time I go. <laughs> Do you know I want to go with you there to the cave of Adullam? Oh, well, it's, it's hard to get to. You need a four-wheel drive, and you've got to go through um, several barbed wire fences and gates uh, in a it's like a kibbutz oh but really we got there yeah wow. we, i still have the phone number for the guy you have it, pictures it, of it oh yeah it's in my Send movie it's in my movie david and solomon i made can can we would you mind let sharing up giving us permission to use a couple of them um, those movies yeah no well no pictures so i can post it to the man cave Oh, yeah. Uh, send me an email after and remind me. Yeah. Wow. But I, I have lots of pictures of the cave of Adullam. What happened at the cave of Adullam? Well, David Why was, was David there? Well, because what Saul, the, Saul was the first king. He was head and shoulders above every other man in Israel, taller. from the But he was still of scared Benjamin. of Goliath. He was still scared of Goliath, so Goliath he, well, was bigger. He, yeah, he didn't, he didn't go out and fight Goliath. Because Goliath was more than head and shoulders above. And he was a very handsome man. But God saw right away, he went to see the witch of Endor to get instructions. And God says, I'm tearing the kingdom away. I'm going to find somebody else. And he found little David. And uh, David then was anointed. And in my movie, David and Solomon, I show, you know, the bishops today, they put a little oil on your forehead. Right. I said, that's kind of wimpy. Because the way they did it in the Old Testament is they took a whole horn, and I do that twice, poured all over my face. But uh, he anointed David as king. From that point on, Saul tried to kill David. And right. David was hiding, and the mighty men came out with him. These mighty men were something else, too. But Boy, some of them guys. were running from, running from, uh, running from, uh, trouble you know the, the, they might they might but they were the warriors but they, they were the became the warriors, warriors. Yep. yeah and they followed david and uh so he was hiding in the cave of adullam and then he went down and also hid in the caves of en Gedi, which is down by the dead sea and he hid in those caves for a while too in fact it says that saul stepped aside yeah i know i know i love this <laughs> and, this uh, is the theme this is the theme in. for this radio interview stepping aside when saul went into the cave to step aside and david cut a piece of his david was hiding in that cave he was yep <laughs> so that was I, i've discovered all those places bear that's one of the reasons i go there i oh you've I been to the, the cave down by en Gedi? yes i've been in that cave and it's also in my movie on david and Saul. oh yeah, that that, that, that area that is full of caves. There's a lot of people, a lot of monks down in that area, even. Right? You want me to send you that movie I made on David and Solomon? Would you please? That'd be so cool. I'll, I'll see if I can get the men in the cave to. 
this is this is the movie right here. I, I made think it. I've seen. Yeah, I think I've seen that, but years ago, I would love to. Would love. And it's to. all about David and Solomon, and I got and you know, and I had a, a lion. And I was a real lion, too. And I asked the guy if I could pet the lion. He said, oh, no. He said, lions may be uh, calm, but they're never tame. You never approach the uh, lion. But I could smell his breath I got was so in the, in the movie of David and Solomon to emphasize how manly David was to kill a lion. To kill a lion, yeah. So, so yeah, so the, the cave of Adullam, uh, the men formed themselves – into the mighty men of valor, and God formed these men into these mighty men yeah. of valor. He had 400 men, but of them there were 30 that were called the mighty men. Ah. And these are the guys, it says of one of them that he, there was a lion in a pit in the snow in Bethlehem, and this man jumped down in and killed the lion with his bare hands. The other one killed like 300 Egyptians bare, single-handedly. He killed them. These men were the most powerful uh, trained warriors and they came to fight for David. Right, you think about who David must be to attract that kind of loyalty from that yes. kind of a man. I remember once I gave a conference with Bishop Samples, do you know him? He's up in, um, up in the West Coast, he's a great bishop. And I knew he was going to be under attack because he's such an orthodox good bishop. You know how it right, is Right, 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 yeah. And I did the men's conference, and I said, I want all of you men in his diocese. He needs 30 mighty men to surround him. Don't let anybody touch him. Protect him from the media. Protect him from legal issues. Some of you men who have a lot of money and you're powerful in this area, you 30 mighty men surround this bishop and you take care of him like he's King David. Well, they me, all stood up and clapped. That's so awesome. And, and with your prayers, let me tell you some experience I had like that. I was riding with Archbishop Wensky. We were taking a ride from Miami down to um, Key West for, for our film Long Ride, our TV show Long Ride Home. And the Emmaus riders are these Cuban uh, bikers who have all been to this Emmaus retreat. And they ride, they're like, and he's a, he's a member of the Emmaus bikers. And when we headed out to Key West with our film crew and all of that, we have certain formation that we ride in, everything's very safe. But Archbishop Wensky rode at the front of the pack, right? Actually, I guess we side by side, I had to kind of marshal the give directions to the filming film crew and stuff as we're riding but when we got on that main freeway it's very windy and crazy freeways there i looked in my rear view mirror and i see one of the mass riders go into the left lane i'm like that's not good we need to stay in formation then i saw another and another and they spread out like about 20 of these bikers spread out to to build like a a, ro a rolling blockade to protect their bishop Wow. I was blown away. Yeah, and every place yeah. we stopped, people came out to love on Archbishop Wensky. So, yeah, you, we're, we're right. We need to pray for our bishops. Yep. Yep. And, Absolutely. Be, and protect them. I love that. But anyway, you were rolling on on these men that were there to protect David and to, and to fight with him. Yeah. Th one of the things I love about being in the Holy Land and discovering these places is you— it gives it makes the Bible come alive to you because you know we've been out there in the desert outside of Bethlehem and we came to caves where the Bedouins live and they live right in the caves with yeah. their animals yeah and so when you you know and these people don't have all their teeth even today and so we we think about Abraham Isaac and Jacob and Joseph having all their teeth there's no reason to believe they had all their teeth right you know, right we, we we have this Western view of when we read the Bible, we see them all in the Western view. You know, Abraham, he's living in a motor home somewhere. Well, they, they, guys, <laughs> they, they, they do rough. use a lot of they do use a lot of that tin siding to add on to their little uh, tents. Right. You've seen that the luminous side, whatever that is. I forget what it is like little metal roofs of the military. Yeah, uses. they do. The Bedouins do that. Yeah. Now. They, yeah, they do that. And they and they also have big uh water tanks now that they fill but they didn't have rvs back in abraham's day Nothing. these guys when i drive through the judean wilderness and you know because you got out and took a leak there and on the way to the sea. <laughs> but you know those bedouins are they live it's rough. rugged uh, well, we, and we i got out with those bedouins i we spent time with the bedouins and and i always say to people that's abraham isaac and jacob and I those do. bedouins don't exactly. That's what I think of. We're talking with Steve Ray. Love this man. We're going to have you. We got one more segment. We got to take a break. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. 
Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Steve Ray, CatholicConvert.com. Steve, uh, I know that your calendar is pretty full, but if someone wants you to come and do a parish mission or, or, some, or speak to a men's conference or something like that, you probably won't do it. Well, I do it, but I can't do it this year because I'm I'm totally booked this year well, well, in the beginning of next year. But why, but wise people know they have to plan a year ahead of time, but they're going to get a, someone like you to come speak. So, oh yeah, that's, uh, that's, I'm already booked. You got to ask me for a year in advance now. That's just so great. Oh, can I ask you a year in advance to be on my show again? Sure, I'd love to come <laughs> on your show. You're one of the easiest to to be on a show with. You're you're fun. Uh, you you and I are a lot alike, and um, we're both down to earth kind of guys i, I did yeah. a show earlier today with a jesuit um a jesuit priest who's a very good jesuit but boy you know th those kind of conversations i have to prepare for and yeah, I know. it's just fun talking with you you're, i know you said what are we going to talk about uh, talk about and i just thought we're just going to have we're just going to let the holy spirit roll you know and yeah. go go where the holy spirit you takes called us. it a holy spirit uh, action moment. plan a holy spirit yeah, action, action plan, plan. My wife and I call it a divine appointment. That, right, or a godsident. Right, when you but meet it, up with someone and it's a, it's a, like a, it, you know that the Lord has been bringing the two of you together for a long time. And if you yeah. don't say something, the Lord's going to say, oh, I brought that guy to Steve Ray to say something and Steve didn't say anything. Now I got to start all over again. I, I know, like, I'll I tell you what, th th this is a true thing. My, 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 my wife, Cindy, came out here about 12 years ago with her friend who was just for a few days who was uh who was uh racing you know the one of the marathons she stayed and we have she has a picture of herself on the balcony of the marriott which is no more i could throw a rock from here and hit the marriott right directly across from my condo on in, on the beach in waikiki she was right there and and god saying y y hey you guys the holy guardian angels you guys over here here meet meet over here you guys got to meet over here but it was kind of funny we, we eventually of course in, in god's time and we did we did have our our divine uh you know appointment and meet each other but yeah you got to be attentive to those moments though like what yep, are you doing you do. lord you, like Paul said, be ready in season and out of season to speak, and uh, you have to do that. And I, my wife and I, we try to talk to at least three people a day about the Lord when we're out. You know, there you go. Home, and no, and, and is is it, it's it, it when you first try to do that, it's almost like a bridge too far. But you get used to it, and as soon as you take a step in the water, the water becomes solid. And there becomes right. this this dialogue. Like this, if you say even just today saying God bless you, people don't say that anymore. Yes. When I was a boy, they used to say God bless you. They don't anymore. I say God bless you to everybody, and the response yes. is, "Oh, well, thank you. God bless you too." Nobody's ever gotten mad at me for saying that. Right. And I see this cross everywhere. Right. It's the uh, San Damiano cross, and I don't wear it because I wear jewelry. Bear. I wrestle snakes and ride camels. I don't wear jewelry, but I wear this because I get comments, and it gives me a chance to well, talk to people. Yeah, and me too. I have a. I wear a Hawaiian fish hook. Some people know it as the Maui fish hook from from uh, from the old the Maui movie by Disney. But the new one that I have, the new rope. I'm never allergic to anything, but I'm allergic to that rope. But I wear it. It's a Hawaiian fish hook. Uh, because people say, "What is that?" And I go, "Well, I'm, it's a Hawaiian fish hook. I'm a fisher of men." Good so for people you. ask me when I go speak, they go, "Why aren't you wearing this? Or why aren't you wearing that? Why are you wearing this?" It's because it's because you just asked me the question, "Why are you yeah. wearing it?" That's why. Yep. It's a great way to start a conversation. I, I was at the airport a while back, and this young man, probably 35, and that's something when I say a young man is 35. That shows how old I'm. Getting. <laughs> Those little kids. 
And um, he noticed this and he said, oh, that's beautiful. And I said, well, thank you very much. I wear it proudly as a Catholic. And yeah. he says, oh, so you believe it? And I said, sir, I said, I believe it enough to die for it. And he goes, well, and he walked away. He was angry at me a little bit. But when we, he sat next to me on the plane. Oh, my God. Yeah, I love that. Love that. <laughs> and he taps me on the shoulder once we get, and he says, you really believe that, don't you? And I said, yes, I do, enough to die for it. He says, well, I don't believe in anything. I'm an atheist, but boy, would I love to believe in something. Can you convince me why I should be a Christian? And I had him for two hours on the plane talking to him. Oh, he? he <laughs> but that he was asked, a, yeah, that was absolutely Holy Spirit action plan. Yep, that was hey, I want to ask the people plan. that are watching, Steve, uh, you know, we, we post this to YouTube. So uh, who are listening to this, go to YouTube when we post this. It'll be posted. It's posted right now. And uh, and write in the comments the Holy Spirit action plans that you've experienced, you know, when God's used you and encourage each other, you know. to. But when there's, not, there's nothing more. You know, I'm a surfer. And surfers know about surfing waves. We know we paddle out. We have our, I have my morning prayer time, did the liturgy of the hour this morning, doing my consecration to St. Joseph. Finally, the whole man cave is doing it. And uh, and I paddle out, and I and I and I look, and I observe which direction is the swell coming from, what reef is it hitting, what board should I use, and then I wait, and then I and then I paddle in, and I ride that wave. I don't try to force my will on that wave. I let that wave tell me how to ride it, and that's what moving in the Holy Spirit is like. It's like riding yeah. a wave. Even Jesus said it's like the wind. You know, you don't know where it's going to blow. You yeah. don't know, and and. It's kind of exciting to just put yourself in the hands of God. At a talk I gave one time, my wife likes to say you should put your antennas up. Zip, zip. Who, who does God want me to talk to today? Yeah, you know, exactly. Kind of no, exactly. And I say to people, tell God you want to talk to at least one person a day, two people, three people a day. And then go out and wait for God to yes. bring those people to you. And people have said, my life is so exciting now. It used to be yes. boring. Now, all the time I'm looking, is that one that God wants me to talk yes. to? So you say something to them to maybe spark the conversation, and then they'll take the hook, and next thing you know, you've got a nice and conversation. Ask, and, and ask them questions. People love to – you know, I yeah. remember when my dad, when my dad first uh, – we our whole family came – to the Lord, at basically at the same time, back in the day, the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, all six members of the family within about six weeks. And they said, well, you know, God wants you to be a witness. And Dad said, well, I'm going to see a traffic accident. No, not that kind of witness. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, uh, to, to yeah. I love that, too. And then, and, then, and then all you're doing is loving people and, and asking them about themselves. And, and, and that, that, that genuine affection for them. Uh, the Holy Spirit. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit. Isn't you know people talk about Jesus and the Father, but because the Holy Spirit's so humble, uh, He's always pointing at the Father and the Son. But isn't the Holy Spirit a great friend? Yes, and He's also the quiet, mysterious one. Yeah. The, the whole Old Testament. I like thinking of it this way, Bear. The whole Old Testament was trying to get the Jews to understand there was just one God because they had they always wanted to follow all the other gods. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Finally, at the end of the old testament god says well finally i got him to believe there's only one god then the new testament starts out and he says okay now that one <laughs> god is made up of three persons so the gospels he introduced us us to jesus and then the book of acts pentecost he introduces us the to holy, the holy spirit, spirit. But the interesting thing is the holy spirit doesn't have a name yeah it's not one we know he only yeah. has a description he's holy and he's a spirit yeah and um he is a uh, an advocate, like an attorney for us. He f and, and f fills us, but he, he is the mysterious one. And yeah, he is the one we need to have a relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, we have to and not neglect. That's, that's you know, new to a lot of people. Well, in Genesis, it says, and the God said, let us make man in our image. So there is that kind of hint of the uh, of the, the Trinity, right. and then the Holy Spirit was over the the face of the deep over the water. and then and he would and he, the spirit of the lord would fall on the prophets but it was still always understood in that unique way but the holy spirit he's our friend and yep. and you want to stay yeah you want to stay close to him and say holy spirit what shirt should i wear today you know i mean he, little he, things jesus, like when jesus explains him in john chapters 15 and 16 and that area right before his crucifixion he he uses a, a greek word that means one who comes alongside yes which is a very catholic way 
Yeah. One who comes alongside. He comes yeah. alongside us and he's not pushy. He doesn't force things on us. We have to make ourselves open to him. But you know, nowhere there in the are Bible times when he... he'll knock you off a horse. But for the most part, yeah. but he, but he, but he, but he is yeah. uh, the the whole thing of coming alongside and saying, "You see that porno- pornographic problem that you're having? You want me? You want me to help you with that? You know?" Yep. But Steve, we're already out of time. I just want to close with this. Wow. In Hawaii, we use the word aloha. Ha means to give breath. And the early church fathers taught us that the father, the love of the father and son, is the Holy Spirit. That's why. It proceeds. He proceeds from them because it's that love. And I've always thought, I've asked Mike Aquilina and others this. There's no ever, no record of this anywhere in the with the early church fathers that I know of. But when the cloven fire fell on the disciples, I think of that one fire, but it's the love of the Father and the Son, that fire of their love, the clovenness of that flame being uh, that Holy Spirit. But in Hawaii, we say aloha, which means to give breath. And Jesus said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. And he breathed his spirit on his disciples. Uh, They call people here in Hawaii who are not from the area Haole, which means to have no breath because Captain Cook didn't nose breathe with them when he greeted them. He shook their hands. And so that's why Steve Ray right now at CatholicConvert.com, that's where you can find Steve Ray. We're going to close with my normal closing. Will you say aloha with me when I start? To give breath of the Holy Spirit. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.